so today <clears throat> we're discussing uh, two of, uh, well, a match made in somewhere, uh, <laughs> Steven Crowder and Prager University talking about Columbus Day. Oh, okay. uh, that's that's rich. That's a rich vein. Yeah. So I don't know if Steven Crowder is an adjunct professor at Prager University or what he's doing there, <laughs> but um, uh, we'll, we're going to play him. He's going to give a little spiel on Columbus being an uh, expert navigator, and then we're going to you know, look at the history of that. So here Sounds about right. As far as Columbus goes, the guy deserves some credit, right? Flawed, to be sure. But he was the greatest navigator of his age, the first person to cross the Atlantic from the continent of Europe, and he did so without any maps and only three small ships. If you can name them, by the way, comment below, as I'm sure your professor can't. But oh. your professor probably has taught you the tale of Columbus as a villain. Jesus. Usually as a starting off point to indict the United States as a whole, often relying on a few key myths and some pivotal lies by omission. All right. All right. And now we, we have an answer to the distinguished the the chair of not gay shirts at Prager U. Yeah. So uh, right. Alan Taylor, who's a author, a historian, I, I'm a big fan of. Uh, he wrote American Colonies: The Settle Settling of North America. He writes. He, he wrote this about uh, good old Columbus and geographers had determined that the world had a circumference of about 24,000 miles, which suggested that Asia lay about 10,000 to 12,000 miles west from Europe. 15th century European ships were too small to carry enough water and food to sustain their crews on a 10,000 mile voyage beyond contact with land. Breaking with geographic orthodoxy, Columbus dared the westward trip to Asia because he underestimated the world's circumference as only 18,000 miles, which placed Japan a mere 3,500 miles west of Europe. In other words, a critical and potentially fatal mistake in calculations inspired his eccentric confidence that he could sail westward. So he deserves some credit, is what you're trying to say. Yeah, basically for being a nutcase. Right. That got so lucky. I like this. You're not doing the usual move, which is like, hey, maybe we shouldn't honor this guy because he arrived in the Americas and immediately started torturing and murdering people and putting them into bondage. You're saying, let's do by your logic that this guy, whatever else you say about him, is a super good navigator. And uh, turns out not even not that's so true. Yeah. Not no. so much. He was just kind of a lunatic Catholic. Yeah. That, uh, he was actually just to, a delusional fucking idiot. He wanted, yeah, he wanted riches. And, you know, there's a, probably a bunch of other guys that also made similar misjudgment and then just died at sea. And we don't have days for them because why would we? Lucky for the natives. Yeah. Mamma mia, I want to go to an Asia. <laughs> <laughs> India, I mean, India, have I the gold? Uh? What an idiot. He thought Japan was 3,000 miles off the coast of England. By the way, I love that. <laughs> just That's imagine it. just that. Like, what an idiot. What an idiot. idiot. It's like. Columbus gets dunked on by frat bros. That's fucking great. Columbus was such a... Oh, wait, no, that's the O'Reilly. That's the O'Reilly on Hitler. Columbus. Hitler was such an idiot. <laughs> Columbus, who was such an idiot, 